control area and proceed to Delta. I'm sure we're pretty far away. Yep, as usual. Alright, uh, I think my doctrine now should definitely be three knots at all times. I think we have company, Captain. Oh, yeah. Give me a contact. <laughs> you have nothing to support that claim. Alright, well, we got some water here. Some, some water. It's deep. We can maneuver more. We can crash dive even more. The main reason for doing the dive is you can use the ballast to help you gain some speed so you can just get away quicker, put more distance between the torpedoes. <clears throat> I'm sure there's another reason for going deep. Let's try and ponder them. Um, no cavitation noises the deeper you go. Uh, layers, you get to tra traverse some layers potentially. Which should mess up a torpedo in other games, but it doesn't really here. Um, the big one that, that the big one that I seem to be getting, at least in SSN, is like increase decre increasing your ballast will help you pick up speed more quickly. And then yeah, once you get down there, once you, if the torpedoes miss, you come out of your full speed, no one can hear you. If there's a layer, assuming. random transients from behind me. I think that usually means it's my ship making a noise. Whether or not I actually hear it, I don't know. Let's, uh, let's go down beneath this lighter and see if anyone's chilling down here, because it's the coolest can probably dive maybe deeper than I can. And this is definitely not too shallow for Nakula. They can definitely dive twice this depth. Ooh, there's a transient off to the off the port there. Oh, no, stop, stop. Neutral ballast. Port beam, that's the word I was looking for. Beam. Beam is this angle. This is bow quartering. Nope. I guess port bow quartering. Port bow. Port stern quartering. And it's the same thing on the other side. Starboard beam. Oh, well, I'm looking. This is the way my starboard beam would be looking. I'm not looking at starboard, I'm looking at port right now. Whoa, two transients from behind. I don't think anyone's behind me, but it's not counting. Let's double check. Come up to course 330. Hell am I? Hmm. 3 Akulas. 3 Akulas at one waypoint, and I killed all of them does seem improbable. Transients to the north, or well, north of us, relative. Assuming the way the bow is pointing would be relative north, but really to the northeast. If there are contacts that way, I am going beam onto them to try and see if there's someone behind me. And beam on means you can a larger, larger profile for sound to emit from my hull. So it's always nice to be bow on to people whenever possible. So there's that transient back there again. Keep her coming. Keep her coming. Oh, I'm kind of sleepy. <laughs> Slightly tired. Ugh. Oh. Man. This mission is definitely taking a lot longer than other missions. I'm not complaining though. I have fun playing this. This is the ninth mission. We have six missions after this. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Yep. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Yeah. Six missions after this. Almost two thirds of the way through this LP. This is going to be my longest LP thus far, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, this game is pretty long. I think my longest one right now is, if, it, if we're talking about pure campaign, I think it's Stalker, call it Pripyat. Oh, transients to the north and south. Hmm. Did I hear a ping? No. 
All right, let's head back to the waypoint. I'm not picking anyone up. Yeah, there's times like these I want to want it to be like dangerous waters where I can like turn on some sonar and try and see if I can see people or something. Oh, but alas, I'm just the captain. <sighs> nope, transients. There's definitely got to be people off towards the waypoint. So I'm trying to be as quiet as possible, as slow as possible. I can't give these Akulas any help in trying to find me. Not one ounce of help. There's that transient again back behind me. I, th I don't know what to think of that. It's gotta be anomalous. Probably. Uh, can I get to that next layer? I don't know. It's useful to run around beneath layers, but then you come up and they hear you right away for some reason and they launch on you. As if they were able to track you that whole time. Because when I pop up underneath above the layer, it should be like a level playing field. Unless I had already detected the guy, and that's why I went to go into the layer to move up to get a better position on him. Like, I was running underneath the layer. There's no reason that the guy that's already above the layer should have an advantage over me, which would be a level playing field, because we're both picking each other up at the same time. But whatever. It's one little gripe I have. Those Hans always picking me up. Yeah, what a joke. A freaking Han picking me up. I had to be doing some stupid shit for a Han to pick me up. And I definitely have in the past. <laughs> definitely been wheeling around at full and the Han launches on my ass. But we haven't seen a Han in a while. But yeah, in that last mission, those two Akulas seem to be working together or something. But I think that was another one of those scripted events. You reach a certain point and they just show up. Oh, God, why am I yelling so much? Quit yelling, boy. I'm seeing those transients. There's definitely subs up there. Torpedo launch. Holy shit. Uh, just long here, just give me a counter shot. I don't nothing else I can do to crash dive. Maybe the torpedo will get off that way and start picking up the sub instead. It's the coolers are picking me up before me. Improbable. There he is. No proper torpedo launch on. Alright, come on, baby. Drive, baby, drive. I try to like ease off my rudder a little bit early if possible, just so I can spend more of my speed in the propulsion direction instead of the turning direction. All right, level your turn, level all control surfaces. I don't know that. Keep diving, keep diving. <laughs> Countermeasures. That torpedo just. Oh god, what the hell? Oh shit. I think that torpedo did blow up or something. All right, level. Neutral ballast. Drive, baby, drive. Kind of close to the crush up here. Got two torpedoes out there. Going for that cool. Oh, geez, turn. Explosion signature. I don't think I got the Akula. Oh, don't, don't snap roll. Got the Akula. Sweet. Close to crushed up here. <laughs> yeah, I think we can, I think we successfully run away. I'll stop. I'll have one third. Make turns for three knots. Let's head back to the waypoint. Rise. Pretty deep down here. 
think Dangerous Waters models the LA's max depth as 1,400 feet or so. This game models it as 1,800. And then for some reason when you get to 53% hull integrity, it only decreases to 1,600. <laughs> but I guess pressure increase isn't necessarily linear. I don't think it is. I don't know. And once again, that run kind of... No, oh, yeah, neutral balance. That run kind of killed all progress we had made, as always. Uh, quit your creaking and moaning. Oh, another train's into the north. There's probably another submarine right in front of me. Hmm. Man, this mission's really long. <laughs> Patrol area and proceed to Delta while well, we took out that Akula. There he is. Hello. Yeah, we won't be driving by him. He's too far away. Oh, man. I'm yawning. Oh, I'm hungry. I want food. They hurry up and find the Akulas so I can make my turkey Alfredo already. Go to town on it. I haven't eaten since breakfast. I haven't had. I've had. Almonds. That's it. All I've had since breakfast is almonds. <laughs> I had my breakfast of scrambled eggs and bacon. But yeah, I'm sure some of you guys eat scrambled eggs, and I found this new way to make them from Gordon Ramsay, and it is so incredibly delicious. Oh my god. I added the video to my favorites if you want to check it out. But basically, you don't pre-scramble the eggs. You scramble them in the pan as you're applying heat and you don't season it beforehand, don't add any salt or pepper because it starts to, the salt starts to break down the egg before you even cook it, makes it kind of watery. So what you do is you take a cold pan and you crack two eggs in it in a knob of butter or pat, tablespoon of butter. Uh, you throw that in there and then you put on some pretty good heat, I'd say medium, medium high. So like a third of the way between medium and high, at least on my gas stove. So throw the eggs onto that heat, start stirring. Just keep, don't stop stirring. It's like risotto, or as the Brits would say, risotto. Don't stop stirring. Keep stirring. As the eggs, uh, at, at first it'll just be like you're stirring eggs, like nothing will happen. And then as soon as eggs start, as soon as they uh, start like curdling or cooking or whatever, take it off the heat, keep stirring. Do that for a little bit, then put it back onto the heat because not all the eggs will have started curdling. Or not curdling, but like cooking. So put it back on the heat, keep stirring, then take it off and then keep stirring some more and then depending on how cooked the eggs are at this point you're going to want to add some in Gordon Ramsay's video he added creme fraiche I haven't been able to find it so I just use heavy cream add a little splash of heavy cream stir it up and then I put it back on the heat for a little bit more and then you plate it put a little salt and pepper on top of it oh my god it's so good <laughs> I keep making it for breakfast every morning and it keeps tasting it's it's like I keep tasting it for the first time when I keep having it it's so I don't know what it's going to be like when I eat traditionally made scrambled eggs after having this incredible velvety smooth scrambled eggs. I, if you're used to normal scrambled eggs, they usually get like, you know, big chunks of scrambled eggs. They're kind of dry looking. But these eggs are like very creamy. They almost, they almost look uncooked. They're not uncooked. But I don't know. There were a lot of people commenting on this video about the eggs like looking like uncooked or whatever. Like, I mean, if you eat like a, fra a fried egg or an over easy egg that's uncooked <laughs> that yolk is uncooked okay I think the transient off to this way is that Akula and then there's a transient off to like 6-0 or something but yeah I if if you have the chance to check out that video in my favorites Gordon Ramsay's scrambled eggs oh they're so good so incredibly delicious and then I cook it and then I make like bacon with it too I got some applewood smoked bacon buy one get one free at Giant and uh, the trick with bacon, too, is, like, you want really low heat. Like, if you try to cook it too long, it's just going to get really chewy. Or if you try to cook it too quickly with a lot of heat, it's just going to get too chewy. You want really low heat. Like, by the time it's done cooking, it shouldn't really be, like, warped or distorted or anything like normal bacon gets. It should be pretty flat. Like, when you oven cook it. Apparently, oven cooking bacon, oven cooking bacon makes it really delicious, too, because um, it's just, like, a lot gentler heat. 
just cooks it more evenly. But yeah, the the trick to pan cooking bacon is low and slow. Low and slow it up. Yeah, that's where that sounds that coming from. Definitely is that a cooler over there. So yeah, <laughs> that's my breakfast. Eggs and bacon. No carbs. I strive for a, a, a low carb diet. I strive for paleo. A paleo diet, but I do like dairy, so I drink dairy. And eat dairy. I like cheese and sour cream. Cheese in Russian is sir, and sour cream in Russian is smetana. <laughs> I only remember that because I used to say smetana a lot on my Russian homework assignments because I just did. <laughs> it sounded fancier than like cheese or apples or something, and it's good. I think you use smetana borscht. Yeah. <laughs> I think you put sour cream and borscht. But I don't really remember. I think that's right. I've never had borscht, but I have had Russian cookies and stuff. Blini? No, those aren't the cookies. I think those are like, it's like Russian tortilla type things. But Russian desserts and cookies are delicious. If you have the chance to try some, you should. They're very good. But I had to stop studying Russian because I needed to focus on engineering. Engineering, I'm talking kind of quietly just because the game is so quiet. I don't feel the need to talk too loudly, so my voice is kind of cracking. Uh, let's juice it up a little bit. This is going slow. Slow, slow. Oh, well, these subs could also be above the layer. Let's uh, let's go back to three knots and actually go up top here and take a peek. Full rise. <clears throat> Full rise for what it's worth at three knots. Oh, there's another transient in my baffles. Not too worried about that. But yeah, I want this mission to end. I enjoy playing it, but I'm hungry. I want to eat. I've been going at this now for over an hour. And we're like halfway through the third waypoint. Oh, there's a transient. Alright, neutral ballast, level the planes. Another transient. That one might be the Akula still. But there's another one that's more up towards like 30. Bearing 030. It's weird to say bearings like 120 or 30 because he's just not used to saying it that way. You enunciate every digit so there's no ambiguity in what you say. Hmm. Last we pointed three Akulas. This one has had one so far. I'm expecting at least another, I'd say. At least one more Akula. But yeah, I have a, a stand and microphone so when. I like breathing out sometimes. It's like something about taking a, a nice deep breath and breathing out. But it seems like about half the time the air gets directed right at the stand mic. It makes a lot of like air whooshing feedback because <laughs> I don't have a headset. Because I spend a lot of research from like audiophile forums. I don't really know if I'm that much of an audiophile, but my headphones are like entry level audiophile headphones. But from what I hear, most headsets really look like they're nice headphones but they're really not that great so that's why I didn't go with the headset I wanted to but I didn't but apparently you can modify these headphones I have to put a headset microphone in it or something now let me see if I remember what my headphones are called they're Audio Technica ATH 600s I think that's right alright well I'm making turns for three knots but I'm still I still have enough momentum that I'm going seven knots, so we are going faster than we're planning for right now. So that's good. We're about halfway to the waypoint. There's someone up there. There's a transient. There's got to be someone up there. Well, let's pass some time. Let's actually go topside and take a peek. See if anyone's up there. Just my luck. I'm going to get a classification on this dude right before I broach this top layer here. Yeah, it's still gotta be the Akula over there. I feel really tired too. I might try and get a lot of sleep tonight. I don't know. I got five hours of sleep last Saturday and I still don't think I've recovered from that. I didn't get home till 5.30 a.m. Holy crap, yeah. There you go. Contact. Oh, just lost him. Uh, he might have gone up. Keep going up. Alright, uh, yeah, actually neutral ballast. And level the planes. I spent a long time pumping out ballast. 